Hey guys, before we get into this video, I wanted to announce the winners for the giveaway that was mentioned in the last giveaway that I started off with in the mid-level bossing guide. And those winners were Bizen and Big Barda, and then also a Twitter follower, and Talking Bot was another person, and I've already given him his reward. So if you are Bizen or Big Barda, please contact me in game so I can give you your free item. Person on Twitter, you've already been contacted via a tweet. The giveaway for this video, very simple to enter. All you need to do is comment on the video. And all I want to know is, what's your least favorite skill to train? Hey guys, Surgeon here, and welcome to a new video. In this video, we're going to talk about something called game ticks. Now, you may have heard things like game ticks in the past, but you may not know exactly what they mean and why people talk about them so much in RuneScape. This video is going to go over a couple examples, actually pretty much most of the examples of which you can abuse or manipulate game ticks in order to giving yourself some kind of advantage, whether it's through fire making or it's through prayer or through combat. There's a ton of different ways that you can manipulate game ticks in order to increase your play as well as increase increase your XP rates, or just make yourself more resourceful. Now, this is obviously something you don't have to do in the game in order to be to play the game, but if you want to invest the extra time, you can definitely be rewarded for abusing these kind of mechanics. So, without further ado, we're going to jump into this, but before I can get into any of the methods behind a tick manipulation is what we're going to call it through this video, first I have to describe what exactly is a game tick. So taken directly from the old school wiki, RuneScape runs on units of time of approximately 0.6 seconds, which are sometimes called ticks or game cycles. All actions are a multiple of this basic tick time. This includes any instance where a message appears in the chat interface, any instance that experience is gained, any instance that a moss responds, and any other actions a player performs, including animations. Hence players being able to perform animations in sync with each other rather easily. Purely client-side occurrences are independent of the game tick, such as like right-click menus. So now we know exactly what a game tick is. It's basically the way that RuneScape measures time inside the game. And there's a tick every 0.6 seconds. Now, if you do the math, this comes out to being about 100 ticks a minute. Now, you may have heard in the past that people use a metronome. And if you don't know what a metronome is, all a metronome is is something that clicks at a consistent rate. It's something that musicians use all the time to keep rhythm and tempo. If you set a metronome to 100 beats per minute, that's very, 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 very close to the rate at which ticks appear in the game. So when you're trying to learn how close a tick is, you can obviously just listen to something like this. Great, so now we have an understanding as to what game ticks are, but how does this help us in the game? Well, the most common way that this is used in the game is for people when they're training skills, such as fishing and mining, are probably the two that come to most people's minds with three tick fishing and three tick mining. You could also w work in three tick woodcutting in there as well, but w what exactly does that mean? How exactly does that work? Well, Reading this straight off of a Skilling Methods Discord, which I'll have linked down in the description for any of you who are interested in more knowledge on this subject, the description for three tick fishing, you use this method and you're able to speed up the rate at which you catch fish. Normally your chance to catch fish is every five game ticks. Fishing is a five game tick method. However, by using an herb such as like a Guam, a Marantil, a Harlander, or a Terramin on a Swamp Tar and then clicking the fishing spot, you're able to catch a fish every three game ticks, making this method almost double the experience per hour of AFK Barbarian Fishing. Basically, the moral of this when you're training a skill such as like mining or fishing or woodcutting is the cycle for catching a fish, chopping a log, mining an ore is every five game ticks. However, by using some other method that is a three tick method, which making, you know, herb tar is a three tick method, I think also fletching unstr unstrung bows is also a three tick method. By using one of these methods, you can actually reset the timer and then you can make the cycle happen every three game ticks. So instead of taking five, it takes three. You're almost cutting the time in half. You can almost double your experience rates if you can maintain this. Now, the trade-off is that you have to be very precise in order to really reap the benefits of this. You'll see a lot of these examples in this video where I pick these up very quickly, but I'm by no means an expert at it, and there are people who are fantastic at these methods who can hit abnormal XP per hour rates. I do not. I learned these methods probably about 
in 10 minutes and then spend about 20 minutes trying to practice all of them. I also huge shout out to one of my friends in my CC. Um, name is Yisterman. He actually recorded some of the footage in here. So if you see a guy with an infernal cape, no, it's not me. There's no infernal cape guy coming. Um, just one of my friends that wanted to help out because he's very good at these methods and he was able to record some footage for me. So without further ado, let's get into some of these methods and how to replicate some of them. Well, we did our example on it, so we may as well start off with three tick fishing. Now, if you watch the footage on the screen, what you'll see Yister doing is he clicks on the herb, clicks on the target, then clicks on the fishing spot. And what this does is it resets the cycle as I already went over. Now, there's two ways you can do this. Basically, the way he's doing it right now is just a process where you drop the fish and it's a much more calm, much more relaxed method because you're not having to implement anything else into it. It's just herb, tar, spot, herb, tar, spot, herb, tar, spot every three game ticks. You can use that metronome that I mentioned in the beginning at 100 BPM, count it to three times, and that's the general cycle. On the third beat, you would switch to, you would redo the cycle, redo the swamp tar, all that stuff, and you would continue the cycle. There's another method where you actually cut the fish, and it's a little bit more intensive because it involves you trying to be a little bit more reactive to what's happening. If you catch a fish and you cut it and you get food, do you eat the food? Do you have to retar? It's a little bit more complicated method, but it's also on the screen right now. If you guys want any more information on this, I already mentioned in the beginning that there's a skilling methods discord that I'll have linked in the description. And there's a ton of videos on there with people doing these and you have a place you can ask questions. Um, I will be linking that. So if you guys want any more further details or have any further questions, you can always go to them. They're a really good community and they have high amount of knowledge about all of this. Transitioning over to another more well-known tick manipulation skilling method, we're going to talk about three tick mining. Now this process is generally done at the quarry in the desert and you can do either two, one of two methods. One is 2S2G, which is two sandstone, two granite, or you can just do 3T4G, which is three tick, four granite, which is what you're seeing on the screen. The difference being that the sandstone method is a little bit less click intensive and is really good to get started off with because it gets you the fundamentals of how to do this. And then the three tick, four granite is much more click intensive, but you can get much higher rates. You can get rates of upwards to 115 to 120K an hour once you get to know how to drop everything and you get all the timing down correctly. Now. This is footage of me doing it after practicing for maybe 20 minutes. So there's a lot that you can learn to this. And there's a lot more to really kind of delve into it. And a lot of these methods you're going to see is just, it requires practice and requires time of you just building the muscle memory of what do the ticks feel like? How long is three ticks? How long is two ticks? How long is four ticks? And just knowing when you're off by a tick and how to reset it. Now there's a guide done by Automology, which explains this very well. It was done probably like three years ago, I think, but it's still a very handy guide and I'll have that linked in the description as well. Basically, he goes into a very good amount of detail on how to drop, how to set up your inventory, how to do all of that. And the last of the gathering skills, we'll talk about three tick, two tick wood cutting. Now, I'm warning you, the footage you're seeing on screen is Yesterman doing 1.5 tick teaks. Unless you're a uh, glutton for punishment and you really love just getting arthritis in your hand, don't try this. But this method that he's showing on screen can get upwards of, I believe it's like 175k experience or something, can get up to 195 to 210,000 experience if done perfectly for hours on end. But the two tick and three tick methods, which are more common, can be anywhere from uh, 115k to about 130k. Um, once you kind of get you know them under your belt and it's the same method the same thing as the um, fishing and mining methods that we've already gone over you're simply just using your tar and your herb to exhibit a three tick action to minimize the cycle from five ticks down to three ticks now with the 2.6 and the two tick method you're implementing the use of going into combat which cut your animation short which allows you to cut the cycle down into two ticks but again Links in the description to videos going over all of that in detail and really showing you very good in-depth examples of that. If you want an example of 1.5 tick teaks, this is a good example of this as well. Um, this portion of the video, he actually does a very good job and doesn't miss a whole lot of clicks. So if you want to see exactly what it's like, this is what you do. But I would not recommend this if you don't know how to three tick anything. Learn how to three tick stuff before you start learning 2.6, 2, tick, two ticks, 1.5 ticks, all that fun stuff. Maybe a method you haven't heard of before, but we're going to talk about one tick herb loy now. You'll see on the screen, this only works with a few potions that I've tested, or it's really only worth it with a few types of potions, but those potions are 
Anti-Venoms, Super Extended Anti-Fires, Stamina Potions. Now you'll notice the thing that those have in common is that their secondary ingredient is something that stacks. And what's important with this method is that you have a ton of potions in your inventory to where you can make the most out of your banking to where you can do 27 potions in one inventory. In theory, you can do 27 potions in 27 game ticks, which is doing 27 potions in less than, I don't know, 15 seconds or something. And the way that it works is that you hold your spacebar down and basically you add these scales or you add the lava dragon scales or you add the amylase crystals every tick. And if you do it correctly and you don't go too fast, then you'll make one potion every tick. Now, you'll notice if you watch the footage, I do mess up and do accidentally drink a few potions. And when I get off tick, I actually stop. But what I'm doing is I actually have a metronome on in the background at 100 BPM. And if I get off tempo, then I just stop, reset, and keep going. If you get really good at this, you can get upwards of like... 700k experience an hour if you're doing those super extended anti-fires. We've also got Hunter that can be abused with tick manipulation. You can do this abusing a three tick method or a one tick method. The one tick method obviously being faster. And the way that you abuse this is that when you lay down a box trap, the box trap laying is a five game tick or cycle. By abusing their three tick mechanics like we've already talked about, you can make this into a one tick cycle. If you or a three tick cycle, if you already have the three tick cycle going, under certain circumstances, you can actually lay down the box trip in one game tick, which you'll see yesterday do a couple of times in this video. I'm still not entirely sure on it, which is why I had him record the video because he's much better at it. But like the other methods we've already talked about, it does cut down about half the time, making your box of trap laying much faster. Again, Hunter isn't exactly a cycle oriented skill as much as like fishing or wood cutting, but it does increase the amount of trap uptime you have if you're able to lay down traps, you know, 50% faster or 100% faster than you would be normally. Quite possibly the fastest skill that we have on this list is cooking and with one tick Karen bonds you could be looking at upwards of 900,000 experience per hour if you can maintain this for a full hour. You can see yesterday doing it in the background this is not an easy method to pull off because you are doing something every 0.6 seconds and if you get off rhythm well it kind of messes up your flow. But the method is quite simple. You want to do it at a bank where you can click on the range and also click on the bank chest without having to rotate your camera too much. And just every 0.6 seconds, you hold down the number two key and you just click your camera bonds onto the range and it cooks them. Um, once you have the cooking level to where you don't burn these anymore, it could be 900,000 experience per hour if you cook them every time and you don't miss any ticks. So best of luck to you if you want to do this for, you know, 24 hours and hit like a daily high score. My best of luck to you, but I will be sticking to wines. But if you wanted to, this is how you can cook them super fast. For those of you seeking faster XP rates and winter top for your fire making, you can look to Grand Exchange Fire Making for a sizable increase in fire making experience. If you do this method and you do it correctly, you can actually hit about 520,000 experience per hour if you can maintain it versus the 320,000 you can see at winter Todd, which is almost a, like double the experience rates. So basically what this method involves is you, you start out to the east of the GE and you burn locks towards the west. When you are about two squares away from the bank, what you'll do is you'll use the logs on the banker, you'll hold down the one key and you'll unnote them. You'll immediately drop another log where you're standing to continue the cycle, as you'll see me do right now. You'll bank, drop the log, keep the cycle going, run to the side, drop another log, and this is where the tick manipulation comes into play. If you do this right, you will continue lighting logs as you run and you won't actually stop. Um, if you stop, you've missed the tick, but it's still as long as you make it back to the spot within six logs, you've done it correctly. Now, I said that kind of fast. Basically, in order for this method to work, if you look at the tiles that I've had marked, as long as you're starting your trail from that mark and you've already used six logs in your inventory, so you should only have, if you have 20 logs left in your inventory by the time you start this method, then everything will line up accordingly. If you don't, if you have 21 or you're slightly off, then what you'll need to do is you'll need to compensate for that by walking an extra square, moving an extra square, whatever, while maintaining your streak. You'll see me do it again right here. Again, it's very simple. Once you've used your tinderbox on the last log, click on your redwood logs and hover the banker, hold down the one key, drop the log, light it, and then keep going. Again, I've been practicing this method, but I'm obviously not professional at it. You run, if you do this right, you should just continuously run. 
and you will drop logs in your path, make it back to the spot with six logs missing from your inventory, and you're good to go, and you'll be in the perfect spot from when you enter. Something else I also want to mention here is you can also one tick carom bones while you're doing this. Again, video in the skilling uh, methods Discord, but it is incredibly click intensive, but it is by far something that is probably one of the most entertaining things that I've seen in this game. Just the sheer magnitude that someone was able to pull it off. Go check out that video if you want to see some insane skilling method. I will never be able to perform that, but my God, if you can, my hat is off to you. Another very short method you can do is prayer. Um, the normal method when you just use a bone on an altar, the offering rate is three ticks. If you manually input it like you see on screen, you can take it down to one tick. So you are basically saving you know, 1.2 seconds every bone. So in the time it would take for you to do one bone, you could essentially do three bones. So you can do this about three times as fast. So there you go, take whatever experience rate you were normally getting here, multiply it by three. That's why you should one tick this. All right, enough about skilling, let's get into combat. Two things I want to talk about, tick eating and prayer flicking. So a lot of you know about shark carambon. If you look on screen, I just did a, basically a shark brew carambon. If you are fast enough and you have good enough clicks, you can actually get all three of those in the same game tick, which can heal an enormous amount of HP if you're in like a PvP situation or if you really mess up on a boss fight and you really need some HP. If you can get that all in one tick, there you go. Huge boost of um, HP in that case. I was only able to replicate it once. Every other time I could get two of them in the same game tick, but I could not get all three in the same game tick again. So if you practice it enough, I'm sure you could get it more consistently than I did. But definitely something to practice if you are somebody who wants to PvP and wants to get like an insane amount of HP really quick. Or you just want to practice it because, well, that's the kind of person you are. But... You can also just use like a brew fish. You could use a carambon fish. Like those combos still work. This is just a one tick three food combo that you can use. Also another thing, you'll see me replicate this also once at Zora, which is the quote unquote normal tick eating, which is where on some attacks, on some range and some magic attacks, the damage is actually calculated before the hit splat appears. And if you time it correctly with your eat, you can actually cheat death that way. So like, let's say I have 27 HP, I'm at Zora. Zora fires, fires a range attack. I don't have protection from range up. The 27 has already been calculated for that range hit. If I eat at the exact right moment before that damage hit spot appears, then I will take for sure 27 damage because that 27 damage would have killed me. But because I ate on the exact same game tick that that hit spot would have appeared, I'm actually at 16 HP. And this is how you can abuse some boss mechanics to where you don't have to eat a ton of food. If you time all your eating correctly, you can actually avoid that by basically cheating death every time you should have died, but you ate on the right tick. So now you're alive. And the last thing on this list is the infamous one tick prayer flicking, which I'm sure all of you have seen many streamers do. I'm not even going to try to explain how to do this because I'm still learning it myself. I've never really learned it before, but the process of it is, is that you flick your prayers every one tick. So it never really registers your prayers being on, but it registers your prayers being on. So you can see that if it's done correctly, you can constantly have protection from melee up and I'm consistently having piety up as well. So I'm getting the increased stats from that, but I'm also taking no damage from this neck rail. Zulu has a fantastic guide and so does DVS has a fantastic guide on how to one tick prayer flick. And those links will be in the description if you wanna get any more information on it. I just wanna put this in the video because it is hands down probably the most famous like tick method that a lot of people know and probably don't know how to do. So those guys will be in the description. Go check them out if you want to get more information on this. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully this video gave you guys a good overlook onto what the skilling methods are for using tick manipulation to your advantage. Again, this video wasn't necessarily 
to be a guide to all the methods. It was simply to give you an overview as to how you can abuse tick manipulation to your advantage. And if you want to get any further research done to incorporate any of these methods into your normal playing, I'll obviously have all those resources down in the description, like I've mentioned throughout the video. Again, thank you guys very much for watching. Go ahead and leave a comment on the video if you liked it. Also, leave a like if you want to. If you want to see more of my content, subscribe and hit the bell so it notifies you the next time that I go live. I'm also streaming quite a bit on Twitch recently, about three to four times a week so if you want to come in there and stop by and hang out say hi we'd love that as well and then i'll be in the description as well all right that's gonna be it for me guys take care have a good day